Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by the garden today. Just wanted to go over this little video on growing sunflowers, big mammoth sunflower seeds. This is one I have here that's starting to get taller than I am. It's about six feet long right now. Look how big she is. These are so easy to grow. They require full sun, lots and lots of room. So if you can grow them singly in a container, a four or five gallon container like I have here that is perfect you can see how big she's getting and she really enjoys that and I also put some green beans in there as well to help give some nitrogen natural nutrients in the soil because green beans are nitrogen fixers and phosphorus fixers themselves so they will help stabilize that soil for me so I usually pre soak my seeds I pre germinate my seeds in a paper towel method which is right here all you do is wet that paper towel up squeeze it out, put some seeds in there, and wait for them to sprout. Now once you have your sunflower seeds that start to show a little root on them, you can then go ahead and plant them wherever you desire. Just make sure they have enough room and make sure like they're at least 12 inches apart. So you wanna make sure they're a good foot apart, your sunflowers, if you're growing them all together. We're gonna go throughout the garden, just go over some tips on how we grow these beautiful things. They always point towards the sun. So you can see the sun is towards the east side right now, going towards the west. We're still in the morning, it's only 11 o'clock. So this sunflower will point towards the sun, which is amazing. They all tend to point towards the sun, just like these over here, which you can see they're getting so big since we put them in the ground. My garden is filling in, they need full, full sun. Now when you first sprout these little guys up until blooming stage, you wanna feed them with like a 795 nutrient system. You wanna go high in nitrogen, you wanna have good potassium and phosphate in there as well. So I always feed with my Dynagro Grow System at the first stages of growing and the vegetative growth before that bloom starts. And then once it starts to bloom, then I go ahead and switch to my bloom nutrients, which is a 3816 or 3126, I think. I think it's a 3126, my bloom nutrients. So anything that's low in nitrogen, high in phosphorus and potassium is gonna work really well. I also have Mag Pro by Dynagro as well that I treat the soil with in conjunction with the bloom um, nutrients. Once every two weeks or so, I use the Mag Pro, which is a 2-15-6, I wanna say, or 2-15-5. So it has really high phosphorus and potassium in it for blooming plants around the garden. Now I topped off with some fresh compost, some Harvest Organics mix, which I love. I love using that composted soil in my garden. Now I use some fresh homemade compost as well, mixed in with the Harvest Organics mix. So they're doing really well. They don't need much nutrients at this stage. I usually feed, whether it's grow or bloom, I always feed once a week. Now. That depends, you know, if you have a nice, rich, organic soil and you're trying to garden mostly organically, then you probably won't need to feed as much. But if you're um, gardening half organic and half nutrients like I am, then you're gonna need to put a little more nutrients in your soil. So I feed all my flowers like this, all my sunflowers once every two weeks with the Dynagro Grow and the Dynagro Bloom. We'll go over here, check out these sunflowers. And ever since we transplanted them, they've been taking off. You can see just how big they're getting. Now, you know, feeding's all gonna depend on what type of soil you have, how much food you're giving it in that soil, and what type of nutrients you're using with that soil that you're using. You know, are you using a fresh homemade compost that has lots of nutrients in it? Are you using just a nutrient system? Um, that's all gonna depend on how much you feed. So you might need to adjust either more or less. You'll notice, you know, your plant might be struggling, might be losing some color, the bloom might not be as pretty. So you know you'll have to increase those nutrients just a little bit more. Now, if you have a nice and healthy plant like these, I don't have to give too much nutrients. I'm only giving them bloom nutrients once every two weeks right now, topped off with that fresh compost, and they're good to go, full sun. And that's how easy they are to grow, you guys. I love these little sunflowers and then we cut and harvested a head off of them. So usually when this flower starts to bloom, which we'll do another video when it blooms, I did a video on collecting the seeds already, which I will grab for you and post below. And um, you wanna wait till this flower opens. As soon as it opens fully and it starts getting um, big and really, really open and you know it's fully open, then you can go ahead and, and cut this and enjoy it in a vase 
or you can leave it on the sunflower to grow and get big. Now that sunflower is gonna end up drying out and getting yellow and black on the, on the back edges of it. And that means that it's time to cut and harvest your sunflower seeds. You can leave them on there, that's totally fine, but it's gonna attract birds throughout your garden. Now if you're growing produce like I am, you really wanna try to keep the birds away from your garden as much as possible. I know they're pretty and we have so many birds around here, but you know what, the squirrels are starting to get in my garden because I have produce, they're starting to dig it up and they will get to these seeds. So what I did did was I planted um, a bunch of sunflower seeds in the back here we're gonna make a big line of sunflowers in the back so yesterday I planted about 12 of them along this whole fence line but the squirrel came right behind me and dug them up so we're gonna start some indoors in containers first and then transplant them outside like we did to these beautiful guys and then this way the bugs won't get to them the squirrels won't dig the soil up or the seeds up it's really hard to start here directly in the ground. You can see I have beans in there. It's just, plants do so much better here when you start them in a container first, and then you go ahead and transplant them in the ground. Um, as far as cutting and harvesting your flower, we'll do another video on that. And when you, um, if you cut this flower once it does fully open, you enjoy it in a vase, you can cut it down to, you know, the second leaf node. Actually, you know, you wanna cut it probably about like there. You know, leave a couple of leaf nodes on the bottom. You could even go down a little more if you want to cut and enjoy that in a big vase. And then what will happen is if you cut that flower soon enough, there might be a little another bud that pops out of these nodes, these leaf nodes. I noticed last summer I had another sunflower that shot out of those leaf nodes after I cut that flower off, which I didn't know they can grow back like that. I thought they were kind of one and dones, but they did grow back and they're beautiful. And we're going to do another video for you once that happens, you guys. If you have any questions on growing these, let me know. Please comment below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being here and watching. I'll see you next time out in the garden. Hope you have fun planting your sunflower seeds. They're really great to grow. And they take like 75 to 90 days to harvest. And just remember, they need to get like, they need about a good foot to a foot and a half of space and you'll be good to go. As long as you give them enough room, they'll get nice and big for you. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. I hope you have a really beautiful day. See you next time.